Well, our military installations here in southern Colorado played a big role in the response to one of the darkest days in our nation's history. News 5's Allison Zimmerman sat down with two retired, high-ranking military officials about the events of that day and how that changed our country since. Yeah, 9-11, 2001 is a day that we all remember. It's a day filled with difficult memories for military leaders like retired General Mike Gould. The day started as typical as any, making his way to the Cheyenne Mountain Operations Center around 7 that morning, where he served as the commander. When I went into the command center for our changeover, uh, we had the news on, of course, and we're seeing the, uh, the first airplane go into the towers. And it didn't take too long for us to realize that this was not a random act. Um, it was an attack. On the other side of El Paso County, a similar story was unfolding for General Ed Eberhardt. It started off just like a normal, beautiful Colorado day here, and, and the same thing on the East Coast. He was the commander of NORAD at the time. I had just returned from my morning run, and I got a call on the hotline. From Cheyenne Mountain. When he learned about a hijacked plane. I think we all assumed that one, it probably wasn't a hijacking. Two, if it was, it was, uh, I hate to say typical hijacking, but hijackings like we've seen in the past. As he was getting ready for the day at then Peterson Air Force Base, he saw the image that lives in so many people's minds. A plane had flown into the World Trade Center. And two things confused me. One, it was day, visual flight rules, so you could I mean, there's no way somebody could accidentally fly into the World Trade Center. Secondly, based on the amount of debris and the damage that I saw, it wasn't a light airplane. Over at Cheyenne Mountain, General Gould was working with his team. Eventually, with concerns of an attack, later that morning, the blast doors were closed at the operations center. And despite many checklists existing for the military in NORAD, Gould credits the quick thinking of the team that day. What I remember most vividly was um, how our team didn't just rotely go through the responses, they were thinking about the type of attack that was unfolding, and it was completely different than what these checklists were designed to respond to. At the time, NORAD primarily dealt with preventing attacks coming from overseas. And over the years, as the FAA took over the airspace, other radars were retired at NORAD, which created challenges. Uh, we had phone numbers for the uh, Federal Aviation Administration, but we didn't have a hotline. We assumed that anything that happened inside the United States was a law enforcement issue, which is a reasonable assumption. And that day, a big decision. At General Eberhardt's uh, direction, we uh, directed the FAA to ground all aircraft. I'll go to my grave believing that as a result of that, we might have saved another hijacked airplane or two. I'm not sure. The ensuing days were beyond tragic for the country, but the work didn't stop for Eberhardt and Gould. Eberhardt found himself in many discussions, including whether or not to reopen Reagan National Airport. My argument in the Situation Room was essentially, then you let the, the terrorists decide what we're going to do and what we're not going to do. Don't let them decide that. We decide what we want to do. For Gould, it's a day he says gave him another sense of commitment to his service. But it uh, more or less renewed my desire to do whatever I could to, uh, to serve and to fight this uh, wicked enemy. Shock and, uh, and concern, of course, and the realization that our lives were going to change for the remainder of, of my time in service and, and actually for the rest of our lives. Many aspects of our military, government, even everyday life changed after 9-11. But where we really need to focus is, is destroying these terrorist networks. There were many times members of Congress criticized the training and response for an attack like this. I can imagine myself going to the president or the secretary of defense and saying, we want to practice shooting down airliners uh, in, in case they might be hijacked. I think they would have gotten a new commander right away. Over the years, new protocols, trainings, and even new agencies such as the Department of Homeland Security and commands like NORTHCOM came about from the response of 9-11. The things that I started asking myself that day, and I asked myself the next three years, uh, the year we were standing up uh, NORTHCOM and the two years uh, that I was the commander, was first of all, why haven't we been attacked again since 9-11? tells me we were 
doing something right. General Gould went on to serve as superintendent of the Air Force Academy. His time at Cheyenne Mountain had an impact on the lessons he'd pass on to the cadets here. One of the key lessons that kept coming back to me was the importance of, of training and readiness. General Eberhardt retired from the Air Force a few years later. And as they've moved on to other forms of service, the events of that day continue to live on. It is a day of terror, death, and fear unlike any our nation has ever known. Thousands of people are presumed dead or injured after that it appeared to be coordinated attacks on the World Trade Center and the Pentagon. Obviously, it's uh, painful to recount. Uh, but if I think about the pain that I experienced recounting it, it pales compared to the people who lost loved ones. Probably the most important thing for, for youngsters to grasp as we remember 9-11 20 years afterwards is that uh, reality that freedom isn't free. And it takes continued commitment and effort by all Americans. A day the country vowed never to forget. Allison Zimmerman, News 5.